We are vlogging. Cool. All right. Um, so the the test. Long story short. Um, long story is the next 14 hours. Um, is we would like to prove that our engine works before we like throw together the rest of the rocket on top of it. Um, and so we will do that today. Maybe tomorrow. Um, we do that through a static fire. The static means that it's not dynamic. Nothing moves. Nothing launches. We don't fly anywhere. If I did my math right, nothing's going to move. That means we will bolt our engine into the test stand in there. We've got our tank hanging already. We'll fill that up with propellant. And we will send it all through with the fire, with the sparks, um, with really good video. And, uh, and, and watch it happen. We will also get a lot of really useful data. Mostly pressure and thrust. Those are the two main things that we care about. Um, pressure in a few different places, thrust exactly one place. <laughs> the propellants will start on these inverters. Um, they're the gas cylinders in the trailer right now. We'll wheel those out, put those on here, flip them upside down. Um, it's definitely torture to the, to the cylinders. Those contain nitrous oxide, which is like a fairly aggressive oxidizer. Um, loves to fall apart in exactly the conditions we want it to explode in. We will then connect that to this hose and this panel runs left to right. So we come in this hose, there's a filter. We will read pressure digitally here and manually here. Make sure they agree. If they do, then we're fine. If they don't, then that's bad. I think they always have, at least I'm not aware of any time that, that hasn't worked. Um, this guy is a pressure relief valve. If the pressure in here is way too high, this thing will just pop and we'll vent it all. Um, we'll vent it all up here. Once we're satisfied that all the pressures are reading correctly and we're good to go, then the people who are working here get the hell out. Uh, and then we will crack open this valve. It will make that sound. Um, this will run the nitrous oxide out of this hose into the oxidizer tank that's hanging up on the inside. If this valve breaks, then we will open this guy by hand. So this can just, yeah, um, and run it into the oxidizer tank. The um, propellants is, are now in the oxidizer tank. That's our oxidizer. To make a fire, you need three things. We have oxidizer, fuel, we will like hand pump in ahead of time. We use ethanol, uh, like the really pure stuff. It's like completely safe in these conditions and very dangerous in the conditions we're about to put it in. Um, that, run, that is inside of the tank. So the silver tube on the inside of this container is actually two silver tubes. Glowing blue. Oh. Once the nitrous oxide is self-pressurizing, if you took CHE-102, you know about this. Um, this is this is Unit Four, where um, uh, liquids and gases exist in equilibrium, and that equilibrium is dependent on their temperature, mostly, and a few other things. So nitrous oxide, at the conditions that we have it in, will automatically evaporate until it's at about 400-ish PSI. Uh, and that is a point where the amount of condensation from the vapor phase is equal to the amount of evaporation from the liquid phase. Um, that pressure is high. This is good. It's not high enough. So we will also put two heating blankets on the outside of the oxidizer tank to like cook it so that the rate of evaporation is higher, which gets us a higher pressure until that is now in equilibrium. Um, the pressure is also sitting on top of a piston that is on the inner tank. So there's a, a seal, like a metal seal between the oxidizer and the fuel. You don't want to mix these ahead of time. And that pressure will both drive through the nitrous oxide. This is called blowdown, where you just have the, the pressure from the oxidizer pushing itself through the valves. Um, and it will also drive the fuel. So you have the, the pressure from the oxidizer that we're using already driving both of these systems. Um, the big rockets that you're used to don't do this. They will use an external pressurant. So usually helium, sometimes nitrogen. They'll pump it in the top and that will create the pressure they use to drive everything. Eventually, 
once we're satisfied with the pressure and the mass and a few other things, um, we will press the big red fire button on the yellow box. Is that around? Uh, the big red fire button does not launch the rocket. It does not fire the engine. It starts a fire. Uh, this is, if you saw the video or around last night, there is an ignition puck. Um, Editor, get that in there. Yeah. Um, it's like a piece of solid rocket propellant that is not that exciting. Uh, it doesn't burn aggressively, but it does burn really hot. And so we will dump a bunch of current into there, cook it. Four amps. Yeah, exactly. Four, four amps, amps every four second. Amps. Um, four amps. Four amps over two ohms um, for like 15 seconds. That's a lot of energy. Um, that starts a fire. Now you have fire and fuel and oxidizer. We will open a pair of valves, send it through to injectors. The injectors atomize the liquid. So you don't want to like pour the two liquids together. You want to mix them really well. So that happens inside of the combustion chamber. The igniter lights them, and then we cook, and we light, we light the engine. That, everything I just described, everything I just described, most of it will take like about an hour, and then the really exciting stuff lasts like 15 seconds. <laughs> an hour and, where things go well. Yes, and so it's been, Six-ish months of prep, and the last two weeks of panic, and a test last week, and 14 hours of setup today for about 15 seconds of really high-quality data. Um, that's the plan. Thanks, I guess. Uh, <laughs> The really exciting stuff, uh, there's about 800 ways that this can go wrong. Um, I'm not going to get into that. Okay. We'll get into it once we get there. Yes, exactly. That'll, that, some of those things will happen today. Uh, leaks is the main thing that will happen today. Um, weird like electrical shenanigans probably will happen today. Um, really catastrophic leaks, I hope will not happen today. Uh, Valve's getting stuck open or stuck closed is a bad one. Yeah, that's, that's the situation. All right. Five, four. Three, two, one. Okay, all sensors nominal. Proceed. DAQ verify all systems are functional and sensors are transmitting data. Go. Confirm with remote.